The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour. Pleasure to be here Monday through Friday, noon to 1 p.m., 877-927-6648. Let's get to the numbers. Dow is up. <clears throat> Let's see. Yesterday at this time, Dow was down over 300 points, started to come back. Um, now we're up 201 at 27,704. So a couple of things happened yesterday, and I think that um, the balance is a little more than I anticipated, but certainly you could expect the balance and a couple of things going on here. Number one, <clears throat> that VIX index, it was just way, way, way too quick. Uh, we went tootling along yesterday um, from about the 14s, Zipped all the way to, I think it was 17.99 and pulled back sharply. Now the VIX, VIX is back at 14.27. So coming off an all time high, and if you look, if you look at the, why well, yeah. <clears throat> If you look at the Dow futures, it made a high yesterday. Was it yesterday? Day before. On Monday, right. Monday it made an all time high. That was on the 2nd of December, and I was talking about this, and I said, that's very interesting. For the monthly chart, you've extended leg D. But in the Dow itself, in the cash index, it made us on the 27th at 28,174. That was very unusual. And that happened to the index and the, and the uh, S&P as well. Futures went to all time high. No, I don't think it went to, it was the NDX. The, the high that was made on the 27th was 8,458.75, then 8,45825. That's 50 cents less. And then on Sunday evening going to Monday, yeah, 87, 845725. So this is very interesting. So you've got a peak G in the continuous contract. <clears throat> the QQQ <clears throat> made a peak G at 206.05 on the 27th. The S&P <clears throat> cash. Made an all-time high 31.54.26 on the uh, 27th. All of them made uh, peak Gs, and they are, are in sell modes on the daily. But those weekly charts, and that's what I've been saying, technicals are still very good. So the uh, S&P is up 20 at 31.14.08. Made a high today of 31.18.02. Filled in the gap from yesterday from the low of Monday, and yesterday we gapped down, so it's full that gap. The Dow hasn't filled the gap from Monday, because the low was 27,000, 27,782, and IWM, the Russell 2000, up 1.20 at 160.80 up, and this is very interesting. It had not a gap down yesterday. It actually get this right because I want to. It's, it's these little details are actually important right now because the low on the second that was on Monday is 159.91. The high yesterday in the cash index was 160.12, and we went below it. We went down to the 158 level. 158.10, and now we're trading at 160.85. The high was 161.22. Wow, very interesting. All right, let's get to all the nitty gritties as, as far as uh, where we are. In the daily charts, we've got sell modes in place. Now, you remember, let me just finish everything. Um, 
in the New York Stock Exchange, the NYA.X. This is the very broad New York Stock Exchange, also PG, on the 27th, uh, right there. Cash goes 13,611.49 on the 27th. All-time high is 13,635. Wow, isn't that interesting? Missed by 25 points after being a laggard, after waiting for since January of 2018 at 13,635, plummets down to 10,723 in December, rallies all the way back and gets to within 25 points. Now, wait, is this the left side, right side price time match? Nope. Uh, yes, 11 months. One, two, three, five, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 months. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. 11 months. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, eleven months. So it has eleven months from the all-time high in January of last year down to the low of December, and then it's eleven months and misses by twenty-five points. <clears throat> Is it going to make an all-time high in December? Is it going to make it exact? Eleven months. Eleven months. We don't know. But in the meantime, back at the ranch, um, this is what I wanted to show you. Remember we were talking about the moving averages? Look at this. Moving averages. Here we go. For the Dow, it failed to cross negative yesterday, but boy, that nine period, look at this, nine period moving average. Look at that. Nine period moving average went very close to the black line. That's the nine is the green, 14 is the black, and it just, what is the difference today? You got, um, can I do that? Is they going to tell me? Oh, uh, no, this won't tell me. Yes, it will. Up, down, low, down. No, it won't. Okay, so it was very, very close. Hasn't crossed uh, negative yet. I suspect it is going to cross negative, but maybe it just re re rebounds. Uh, it deflects back up again. All right, let's look at gold. Uh, gold at this particular moment is trading at... you got to hit the right key. There we go. Down five at 14.79. Had a big day yesterday. Went right to the 50 period moving average, a little dash gray line. Um, and then today popped up. It opened lower, popped up, and now it's down below. Uh, it's above the 14 period moving average, 14.79 at this particular moment. And the MACD is good. And the stochastic is, is rallying, but not great. But that on balance volume says something's wrong with this picture at this particular moment uh, because it's flat. It should be up, but it's not. It's just it's kind of sideways to down. And the monthly chart says ho hum, stuck in the range, nothing to see here yet. And the silver is the same thing. Silver tried to rally, went all the way to the 50 period moving average of 17.41. Now it's trading down at 15.92, trying to go for the 200 period exponential moving average in the daily. Remember those rectangle formations? Let me just drag this across here. If you don't think a rectangle formation is a powerful instrument, wow, just have a look at this. Look at that. That's the line that I drew, I drew in way back. Um, it actually goes to just drag the bumps. There, oh, look at that. All the way from, from August, the week of the 7th of August, of 19, 19, uh, 20 and 19, all the way across, it keeps coming back to this base of support. Will it break down? We'll see. I'll be right back. Basil Trap and Tiger Conditions are. Dial's off 195. We'll be right back after these important messages. So look at the dollar as well. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. We're back. Basil Chapman, 186 points up in the Dow, 20 points in the S&P. It's kind of stalling out here. We're going to see. I'll talk about the overview in a moment. Let's just finish this. The dollar is down, 98.54. I think it was that the 27th as well. Everything makes us 29. I think that was a little earlier. That was oh, that was the 29th. 29th, uh, the Dow, the dollar hits 98.54, just about a point and a half off the old high, off the recovery high, five-year recovery high, and uh, lo and behold, is that a five-year? I'm sorry, two, three, two and a half year. Um, what we're looking at is that uh, the dollar has gone to. A peak D yet again. Remember, the peak D it was made back on the first of uh, this first uh, of October, 1967, uh, and then it comes back down to 97.11 on the first of September. Rallies up to another peak D at night. That's four peaks higher in the Chapman methodology. 98.54. That was on the 29th of November, and now it's hit a low today of 97.43. It's trading at 97.66. Uh, it hit the 200 period moving average. Every time it's done that, it's rebounded above it. I don't know if this is the time it's going to be different, but the weekly chart says there's a dreaded H pattern forming. So let's see if it's able to break away into the 98.50s over the next two weeks, or if it's going to break down and go to 97. But that monthly chart has made a peak D, and it was a peak D way back in January of 2017 at 103.82 before it went to the low of February of 2018 at 88.25. So this is a very nice bounce, but it's taken quite a long time. I like a strong dollar. I want to see a strong dollar. So uh, the most important thing right now is uh, the EUR USD. EUR USD. Um, had a balance and now it's given back some of the balance at 1.107. It needs to get to the 1.118 to say, ah, 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 I've had enough of sideways. I'm breaking out. Hasn't done that yet. And it better hold 1.000. 1, 1 and the USD JPY, that is the Japanese yen currency, uh, dollar currency, um, has a, had a big pullback. I have to call this, I can't call it a G and an H because you don't get that. So this is an A, B, C, O. Oh. I have to rename this. I don't usually do that. Uh, not not in this not this kind of manner, where I have to move the down arrow all the way back, go to a an up arrow over here. This becomes an A. And then it matches the dollar because very often, not in price but kind of direction, 
the yen moves closer to the dollar than the inverse, the mirror image of the uh, of the. There we go. Uh, C and a D. So that's the yen and the euro, and this has gone to a cell. I'm going to put a down arrow here, even though uh, it looks like it's trying to rally. And it's a leg D. Oh, this is the same thing. Weekly big D way back in April, uh, pulls back, comes back, rallies, goes to a leg D. And there's a chance that this week it makes a peak D. We'll see about that. So that's that. I just wanted to quickly say uh, crude oil. It's very interesting. This is a big move up in crude oil. It didn't, oh, is this the same thing? So crude oil is trading at 58.44. I'm not sure what, what turned it around. That was a really ugly session back on the 29th, uh, up in the 58.30 uh, area, and then tumbles down to 58.02. And then it has a rebound, and now it's a little bit higher than that bar. It's at 58.53 as a high, 58.43 right now. But it's stuck in the range. Look at this weekly chart. This is range bound, and I don't want to ignore it because when you get this kind of reflex action, you remember the, this kind of it's like a spring-loaded action. And in fact, let me do this. This is the most important thing. This pattern that I'm looking at right here says a breakout above. Here we go. Uh, what a, oh, maybe it's the mouse. It's not just allowing me to freely click. There we go. You see this kind of oval pattern? What's important about it is that if there is a break in the continuous contract of crude oil above 58.74, the high of the 22nd of November, it can go a little higher. And then what would happen is like an oval pattern, and it breaks above it, it can go into the 59 area, but then it's probably going to come back into the 5740s. That's going to be the clue. Because if it breaks down again, that's decisive, decisively um, looking like a, a rectangle formation. But if it suddenly breaks down, it's very negative. And if it does break and it starts to go to 59.60 to 60.22, something in that range, no, I think that's a little too high. 59, right there. So 59.25 to 59.75. If it breaks and holds in that area, that starts to improve the weekly chart to the point where I would have to say there's now a chance that the crude oil can break from this pattern and start to move quite a bit higher. I didn't think I'd say that, but that's that's what I'm looking at. Higher highs and higher lows on daily crude. Um, sort of, not quite, but it's kind of like that. I, I'd rather prefer to think of it as a rectangle, as, a, as an oval pattern within this big rectangle where it just keeps coming back in. Look at this. Once, look at this. This rectangle formation, it's just been stuck between 58 and about 53. It can go a little lower, a little higher, but it keeps coming back into the range. So it's a pattern within a pattern within a pattern. <laughs> See what happens. Um, okay, it's crude oil, but we have to look at the TLT. TLT trading at peak D. Um, at, 139.54 down 167. Isn't this interesting? Look, we had this spectacular gap down. This is really a big one the other day because it was also a bit of a surprise. 1120 uh, on the 29th of November, it's up in the 140 area. Boom. Monday, gaps down two points. Remember, it goes down to 137.95. Island reversal yesterday. Huge move up. One of the things I, I, I think I spoke about it, but it's something that I usually talk about. Um, I usually talk about when the market becomes vulnerable, and in layman's terms, vulnerable means when there's a lot of selling. They never say vulnerable because it's going higher. They say vulnerable because they're selling. Money tends to flow out of equities and into the so-called safety of bonds. I say so-called safety of bonds because one day it's not going to work out that way. But in the meantime, that's what we'll be looking at. So most importantly, what we are considering here is that the pattern that I call the dreaded H pattern, the lowercase h from 148.90, a weekly chart peak E pulls back to 136.54, rallies back up to about 145. Pulls back to a new low of 130, was that 34? 
Yeah, 134.45. Uh, the week of the 8th of November, and now it's bouncing. So once again, it's trying to form these arch formations, and arch formations have a particular modus operandi. If there's a push back into the 143.5, 144 area, that's going to be really positive. At this particular time, sort of stuck in the low range, trying to bounce. All right. Spoke about TBT yesterday. You'll see the TBT had a sharp decline yesterday, and now it's bouncing a little bit. Stuck at uh, 25.25, up 56 cents. Just stuck in a range for now between the 26s and the 24s. I'll be right back. Dow's up 172. Basel Chapman Tiger Ignitions Hour. Bunch of questions came in. I'll get to them as soon as we return. Uh, was there anything else I want to look at? No, I'll look. I, I can now do questions. I'll be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now is a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. I, I got some really good questions. I, I, let me just deal with one at a time. So, question. If one feels China deal will happen, isn't this a great buy regardless of current technicals? So, Kevin, you know... That is a really good question, a question you've asked many times before, and, and, and the markets kept going higher. I have to... How can I put this? All right, let me just do this for a second. I'd spoken about this quite some time ago, and what I'd said is, I believe that the president has found an absolute... The president has a particular modus operandi. And he tends to use whatever works, and he uses it until it stops working. 
number one. Number two is, other than, um, other than the tariffs, I suspect that the market would have been pulling back a little bit more over the last uh, few weeks. So absolutely, this is a tool for him. And he's used it very well. He would like it. I I'd said about a month ago, I said, this is the period coming up, the period of the next three months, this is in November, December, January, maybe February, would make the most sense on a political format, regardless of who's president, at this particular point with the market at all-time highs. This is the period where you'd prefer to see the market pull back and then have a great April, May, June, July, especially your July and going into August, uh, you, you want to go into the election year with a market in full ball, uh, bull mode. Yeah, it makes it very difficult to lose. If that's, it doesn't matter who it is, just makes it, remember with Obama, I expected, I was one of the few people to say uh, the next president will be President Obama, but I suspect he might be a one-term president, and that was because of the economy at the time. I thought it would be very difficult for him because he was kind of anti-capitalist. Meantime, it turns out it was the greatest, one of the great bull markets of all time. He never spoke about it, yet was. And now Trump has considered himself to be Mr. Market. There'll be a penalty to be paid for that, I believe, a very, very strong penalty. But not yet. It's still too early in the game. So I suspect that it is just a tool and that he doesn't want to actually resolve the problem. He wants it hanging over and he wants more than 51% of the problem to still be a problem so that he can manage the problem. Um, he doesn't want to resolve it and eventually when he, everything's concluded, he just wants a 51% win because that's what he calls winning. So I just needed to say that. So I don't see anything that's changed. For instance, now I can go to what I wanted to show earlier. Now's an appropriate time since I just read your note. Um, look, look what happened when the mag, when the uh, nine period, the green nine period moving average crossed negative and went turned pink uh, under the black moving average, the 14 period moving average. That started off the whole process I discussed way back in April when we went short the day before the the uh, the high, um, and then I called it a bad news cloud cover. When we went short right here in September at 27,398, we went short 27,391, seven points off the all time high. And then it took a whole bunch of time, 13 sessions before it crossed negative. Then I missed this one I want to do. We just missed it, but we did go short about 120 points off the high back in, uh, that was the high of September. Bad news cloud cover. Uh, the high was right there. I think it was the 16th of uh, the 12th of July, and then we came down to 14 days before they crossed negative. Now I've drawn in the oval pattern, but I decide I'm going to go to the high of the 19th of November, our very first time to uh, attempt a short at, on the at 28,090. Um, and then we took it out. We went uh, just a little bit above it. We went to 21,000 all-time high, 28,174. So we were very fortunate. I think we were fortunate uh, two days ago uh, at the open, about 80 points of the 70 points of the high, we got short. And now I'm going back just to be cautious. I'm going bad news cloud cover. I'm going all the way back to the 19th, I should start it over here. But the fact that yesterday we broke decisively underneath, look, we broke decisively underneath. Every other time it took ages before we broke decisively underneath the, the 14 period moving average. That happened yesterday. So I can just go with it. What I see, my chart says that yes, we could be very choppy, but choppy with lower highs and lower lows. And we might not go all that much further to the downside because once we cross negative, it took just two more big down candles in the daily uh, back in October to go to the October 1st low. And then when it crossed very negative in, uh, that was in July, and then it crossed negative the 1st of August. It took one, two, three, four, five, and a big bounce, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and 11 sessions later, 22 sessions from the sell signal, before you turned up and you started the big move up. 
So I, I suspect that we will go down, and then the big test comes with a rally, maybe sometime uh, third week of December. Maybe go. You know, remember my rule of thumb is that if the Dow survives the usual Octo September October down moves, and first last week of October, first week of November. Um, it's trading near the, the yearly high, there's a good chance you're going to close near the yearly high. So we'll see. So I'm just trying to do my analysis as best I can. The other thing to look at here is, um, so that's to answer your question, I think you are right in your assumption. I think I'm right in my analysis. I, there might now be a compromise between the two, because now we know that uh, Trump is using it in shorter time frames as a tool. And at a certain point, that gets worn out. People start not believing it anymore. So all I can say is, yes, we've got, was it December the 15th um, deadline, or 12th and 15th? So we've got the deadline coming up in just over a week. And let's just deal with it one step at a time. So right now, I think this is just a bounce. I've answered your question. Uh, I do think limited upside. But maybe it's limited downside. And the big thing about it, if I can show it, I guess show my subscribers every day, is that I showed here the daily chart. The MACD is very negative, and even with this bounce, the stochastic still only at 40, uh, what is that, 49 percent. And I think there's still room on the downside. And there's a pattern that I call uh, right here, Chapman Wave 5. I think there will still be this Chapman Wave 4 to the upside. I think there'll be a Chapman Wave 5 under 27,325. The 27,200s will be the key test. A break under that said, so, uh oh, now there's much deeper weakness. And if you look at, uh, I don't want to take too much time. Uh, if you look at a lot of the key stocks, uh, many of them needed a digestive phase, and that's what they're getting right now. Then, yeah, now I can get to some of the questions in the den. Let me see. First question was, whoops, am I going to see the first question? Question. Um, yes. Uh, let's see. I apologize for being uh, late for my um, midday update. I just had to do some. I, got, I thought I got rid of all the snow and the ice and everything, but some of it had, uh, just showed up on the stairs outside, and I just want to make sure that it was clear, so I was busy working out there, and then I forgot my time. So, question. Basil is continuing the saga of CLVS. Uh, what now looks 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 like Doji is forming halfway marker or turnaround Tuesday, also a 3.382 Fib level. So yesterday, the, qu the questioner said, uh, what about it? Uh, it was in the, right here, Clovis. Type it into the den by mistake. I'll be back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com.
Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD. Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. To Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Oh, folks, so uh, CLVS, uh, this is Clovis on Cology Inc. Biotech. We've had a, uh, one, of our, one of our TFN listeners um, had sent, uh, periodically sends in really good calls on, on uh, biotech stocks. Um, and this was one of them. And it screams from the uh, twos. 2.93 was the low in, uh, that was October the 29th. And it screams all the way to the high of three days ago at 17.37. So let me type that in here so I know what it is. I don't have to keep checking at 17.37. And then what happens? It pulls back. So what happens is yesterday it pulls back a little bit. Uh, it's in the 15s, 15.60 or something. And we, I, I get a question in the den. Will I, will I be able to buy Clovis at... Um, 12s. And my answer I typed in was, are you kidding? It's a biotech. Of course you'll be able to get in the 12s. Well, during the day, I'm looking at suddenly I see Clovis is down one and a half, then it's down two and a half, then it's down three, and then it's down uh, five. Or was it five, five percent? I don't remember. Anyway, it comes down to $11.00. And 57 cents down four uh, from where it was. So, um, yeah, and now it's trading at 12.04 at 11.39. Now, this is 11.39 was the low. So, this is a biotech stock. It made a peak E with a doji can, long legged doji candle. You know my rule of thumb? If it takes out this kind of candle, if it takes out this, the wick uh, halfway into the lower part of the long legged wick, and stays there for um, on a shorter time period for a little bit, be careful because it's going to test the low. Well, not only did that, it, it plunged. Now I'm going to say because of the single leg A up, and it was obviously all news related. I don't know what the hell. Oh, maybe I can do that now. News, let me see. Where's my little icon here on trade station? Hardly ever use this. A news window. Uh, news window. Clovis. Okay, what does it say? It says... Clovers Oncology Option Alert calls, the $15 calls, um, twice it's there. Oh, then it says $25 calls. Uh, all right, I don't know what it was. Uh, Clovers Oncology. Shares increased by 1% 1 to 11.79. The market cap seems to be in the most recent rating now. Maybe it was, I don't know what it was. Anyway, the fact is, that's what it did. And now you've got to be really careful. I'd, I'd say hold off a little bit. Let's give me a yell if you see this thing trading in the, see the 14 period moving average at 10.47 cents that has been cut by a 70%, going from 17.37 to the 10.38 uh, level. Um, I think that that's a possibility. I, I don't really want it now. Uh, I'd be wrong if it suddenly bounces to 13.80, 14.10. Uh, then I'm going to say, okay, now it's got the rectangle formation. It could stay there for a while. You could trade it from the bottom to the top and get out, bottom to the top and just keep getting out. I'm just going to say, hold off. And I, I, I wish there was something else that we, we could uh, know about it. Uh, but all I can say is I'd be a little careful. Yes, it did hit the 12s. But if you do remember, I said, let's see how it handles the 11. What was that number? 11. I think it was 11.57 area. So it's just taken that out. 
I'm going to say give it a little more time. Put it on your list, but I don't think I'd be running to buy it now. The news is out and now it's digesting those gains. Whew. Okay, next question I had was right here. Um, ooh, where is it? Um, questions on the right here. Uh, answer is... A weekly... Oh, the TLT. So the TLT, the question is said... Uh, got out of uh, some long positions uh, yesterday. Uh, what now? And worried about the weekly chart, lowercase h, that went quite sharply lower. But then, since the, since the week of, okay, the low was 136.54, the week of the 13th of September. It bounces all the way to the 145 area and makes an arch formation, comes back, closes below that low. It goes to 134.45, the week of the 8th of November. And since then, it's closed above that left side low five times. Well, one, two, three, this is the fourth week. We don't know where it'll close, but this is the fourth week that it's much higher. So I am going to say that I think that there's another arch formation forming. And the big question is, when can we expect a leg D, or could we expect, or should we expect a leg D in the monthly chart? And I'm going to say the next really big decline in the Dow, if it happens over the next six weeks, I wouldn't be surprised if the TLT rallies sharply and that the bond yields come down maybe to the 135, 133 area in the TLT to retest that level. And then there'll be a rally at some point going to a leg D above 148.90. And that's the way I'm looking at it purely on a technical basis. Um, so I think there's going to be a chance to buy the TLT. So does that say the TBT really is after the questions yesterday in, in play? Probably as a bounce it could be, but I, I'd, I'd rather use these things as visual tools because trading it is really because you've got to overnight trade. Anything can happen overnight. And it only trades during the day. It's like the GBTC, uh, GBTC, which is the uh, um, Bitcoin ETF, it only trades overnight. So anything can happen. So I'm just going to say, yeah, let's just watch this. And uh, to be to be real clear, if there is a move in the TLT below 137.95, that's the candle low of the second. That suggests that yields are going to go quite a bit higher in the shorter term and that the TBT will be in play and that it should challenge is at 25, 25 right now. Should probably get into the 26s. At this particular point, um, it's real tough to play. All right, Dow's up 193, further buying coming in. Uh, okay, question I had was uh, right here, if I can read it, XLI. Uh, XLI is, in fact, had a peak E. This is not, was this the 27th as well? No, I think it was the 26th. Yeah, 26th. The industrials made a high. This is the XL. Here we go, the XLI. There's the S&P Select Industrial Spider Fund trading at 80.52. Was it 82.65? Two points. It's just not a big deal. Yesterday, it did look like it was a big deal. There's an island reversal here. Can't ignore island reversals. Does that get filled in? I suspect it will get filled in, but uh, this is really, um, this, is, this is a much better reflection of the industrials than uh, the Dow 30. The Dow 30 is not really an industrial anymore. It might by accident have some industrials. So watch this closely. It tried to rally. It went all the way to 80.90. Yesterday's low was 79.26. Um, it's really important to follow it. Next question, I think, was a very good one. Uh, GD wants to know about Sierra Cloud. CRM minus 5%, Oracle uh, minus 3.3, Workday minus 9%. And now is down as well. Uh, now is down 3%. Microsoft is down 1.3%. Yeah, hey, good point. I'll check that out as soon as we return. So, Dow's up and tight conditions are. Dow's up 198. SB's up 21. Um, and then I'll quickly talk about my uh, Supreme stock.
that I had for subscribers this morning. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge heard here at TFNN.com. Uh, yes, Gigi, thank you for telling me that. Uh, you showed the TLT. The TBT is two uh, times two. I, I know that, but the chart pattern is the same. It's the only inversion uh, that we've got of the TLT as a chart. That's the only reason I use it. I wasn't talking about it uh, as... Uh, as an instrument to buy, just as an instrument to do a technical analysis on. And then, then a statement in the den was that um, Basil Clovis CLVS had 50% short interest, so short squeeze. Plus, they reported low operating loss and possible indication of approval for prostate cancer. All right, well, that's, you know, I mean, so it's, it's obviously a, a stock to keep in mind. You know, it's one of the biotechs that has a good story. Now, I just want to mention to your subscribers, if you're listening, um, the, the, the screamer trade I had on today, if you were fortunate enough, I said to buy it on, on the dip after a few minutes, if you're fortunate enough to have waited and you got it near the, the, near, uh, the low, um, that allowed you that very tight to one and what, 1.2% stop, and you're in it, and it's now trading um, a little bit above yesterday's close. This is exactly what we wanted to see. If you did, if you were stopped out, you have a choice. You could maybe go with a lighter position. Now, I do think it's about to start uh, moving higher. We did have one that I, I took off, and then I said I just I didn't want to follow it right at this moment, but I expected that it would make that peak C. You know, we're always looking for the fourth highest peak in the Chapman Wave methodology, and that is BK. Uh, CC BackRock Capital Inver Investment Corporation closing mutual fund uh, company. We had it at 14.96. We had a tight stop of 0.04, 1%. 
uh, we got stopped out and then it went to, from a peak C at 506 it pulled back and I said yep it looks like it wants to make a D I had a choice today either this one or, or that one well today this is the screamer it's up 1.9 cent percent at 5.11 um, it's doing exactly what we wanted uh, unfortunately we're not in it uh, but I, 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 this, is a, this, is, this is a learning experiment for me. I've tried to do it myself. I think I'm getting a feel for the way I can do it for subscribers. It's a little more difficult, a lot of more words, a lot, a lot more pay. I think I'm going to get it right. But these screamers are really, if they work, they just they, they make up for any tiny loss very quickly. So have a wonderful day. I'll see you tomorrow. Um, stay tuned for Steve, Dave, and Tom O'Brien. Check out my opening call, my daily newsletter. Uh, doing quite nicely these days. And... Uh,